Good morning, everyone. My name is Lily Volteran, and I am a data science master's student at Columbia University. And today's lesson is on regression analysis. This is an overview of the topics we will be discussing today. And we are also using the advertising data set, which can be found on Kaggle.com. Let's introduce the concept of regression. Regression is a supervised learning technique where the outcome is a function f that takes x, i.e. the features, as the input and computes the y's value as an output. This is different from classification because in regression, y value is continuous. The most commonly used model for regression is linear regression. It is also the simplest regression model as the generated function is a linear equation. x1 to xr are the features of a data objects. Beta sub zero is the intercept and beta sub one through beta sub r are the coefficients of the features. Epsilon is the random error, which is usually modeled as a zero mean Gaussian distribution. During the regression learning, the values of the intercept and the coefficient are learned as an optimization problem so that the learned model fits the data the best. In this data set, sales is the targeted variable. Using regression, we can generate a model that uses one or more other features to predict the sales value. Bivariate linear regression is a linear equation where only one feature is included. In the three figures, we plot the sales versus TV, sales versus radio, and sales versus newspaper, and the corresponding linear models separately. The plots show that sales has the highest correlation with TV and the lowest correlation with newspaper. The first model fits the data the best as the data points are closer to the line compared to the other models. Now we will review multiple linear regression, which includes more than one features in the model. The figures show the plot of the data points and the learned model in a 3D space. Now we will consider all the three features such as TV, radio, and newspaper against the targeted variable sales. To generate the model, it is usually learned through gradient descent, which gives a direction of which step optimization. The parameters including the coefficients and intercept are randomly initialized. For a data record in the training set, the algorithm computes the gradient of the loss function on each parameter with the values of x and y, and the current values of other parameters to update its value to make the descent value zero, i.e. to minimize the loss function. The loss function is defined as mean squared error. By minimizing MSC, we can get the model that fits the data in the training set the best. The left figure shows stochastic gradient descent process, where only one data point is used in each iteration to compute the gradient. The right figure shows batch gradient descent, where a batch of data points are used in each iteration to compute the gradient. Now we will review methods in determining the quality of our model. Given a set of nodes, we can plot several lines to fit the data, corresponding to several models, which is formed by calculating the coefficients and intercept. We need a measurement to decide which one is better than others, and thus we use R-squared, which we'll discuss soon. Residuals refer to the difference between actual values and their predicted values. MSE aims to find the model that has the minimal residuals. We also prefer the model where the residuals are random. In other words, no correlation with the Y's value. Thus, we find the regression model where residuals are small and unbiased. The figures 
show the residual plots for two linear models. The x-axis is the residuals and the y-axis is a predicted value. From the plots, you can see that the residuals in the left plot lack patterns and are quite random, but the residuals in the right plot clearly have a negative linear relationship with predicted values. It is not preferred to have a biased model as a model would factor some input and generate biased results. R squared is a measure of the value quality of a regression model. The value ranges from zero to one, where zero indicates that the model cannot explain how Y's value changes with X's value change. We wouldn't want a model like this where a value of one indicates that the model can explain all the change of y values from the change of x values. So overall, we would prefer the model with a higher r squared value. The figures show the r squared values for three models. The higher r squared value is, the better the model fits the data. Now we will discuss some commonly used metrics to determine the performance of the model. As regression is unsupervised learning, the accuracy of a model is usually tested on the testing set where the data points are not tested in the training process. Such metrics include mean squared error, known as MSE, root mean squared error, RMSE, and mean absolute error, MAE. MSC is computed based on the deviation between predicted values, true values of y. Our MSC is the square root of MSC. It has the same unit as y. MAE considers the absolute difference between the predicted value and the true value for each data record in the testing set. Here we differentiate between the performance metrics. One thing to note is that the RMSE is a default metric for a loss function in regression. The lower it is, the more accurate a model is. Cross-validation is a standard way to test supervised learning models. It tests a model several times and rotates a selection of the testing set and then averages the evaluation. The example here shows a five-fold cross-validation in the accuracies of the five tests printed. The average of those values is used as the overall accuracy of the model. And that concludes our presentation on regression analysis. Thank you.